Okay. I think it's happening. It's happening. Okay. Hi. Um, so this is Monday. This is class. What's up? You're in my sunroom. Welcome to my home. Here's my backyard. Hi. So um, I'll post a video with further instructions about how this is going to work, at least for this week. But I'm, I'd like to wait until the Board of Trustees meets because they're meeting today and they'll decide whether or not we have, you know, classes after spring break. So um, I'll post an update to School Schoology when I, when I find out and I'll um, give you all that info. So for now, we're just going to have class. Um, so I want to orient you a little bit to how this is going to work. I have set up this software where you have me in this window. Hi. It's kind of weird. I'm actually looking at a camera. So I'm just pretending it's all of you. Um, and then you're going to have here, and you'll see me. I'll look down at it. This is basically me looking at the board right here. So here is your uh, slides. I'm still going to try to go slow. The beauty of this, though, is you can stop me. <laughs> and then up here, um, in information announcements to kind of help you, you know, what chapter we on went, stuff like that. And then this right here is basically the blackboard. So, um, yeah. So it's kind of like we're here in class, except I guess you can't ask me questions immediately in real time. There, is a, there are a couple ways I'm going to address this. Um, the first is... When you watch these videos, please take notes. You, nothing is changing. The only difference is that I'm not in the room with you right now. So um, take notes, just like you would. I hope you have your notebook and write everything out. Um, that will help you learn it. You need to do it just the same. When you have questions, write them down. And like I tell you, always email me. The beauty of this is you can email me now. You're at your computer, right? Um, I'm going to have a time or a couple of times where we have a live stream q and I'm also going to have virtual office hours this week. That's going to be a part of that instruction video that I'm going to post later. Um, so you're still going to have full access to me. You can email me. We can meet virtually. And I'm going to have a live kind of review Q&A for folks who basically want to come to class and ask questions in real time. I just didn't want to do that with the actual lectures because some folks cannot help but do learning asynchronously, at least, especially after this week, potentially. So I wanted folks to go ahead and get used to that. Also, I kind of have to work asynchronously because for the time being, I am homeschooling um, my son, who is in the other room. River, you want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> so, okay. So we left off with roots. So let's go on to stems and stem tissue. We're going to finish up chapter 36 today and hopefully move on to 37. So, um, within the stems you still have the three kinds of plant tissue. Remember you have ground tissue, vascular tissue, and uh, ground tissue, vascular tissue, and epidermal tissue. Sorry, looking at the camera, I zone out more. Um, so, you have three kinds of leaf configurations and these all come from the shoot apical meristem and that shoot apical meristem gives rise to the stem tissue as well as uh, leaf primordia. Primordia are basically just undifferentiated tissues so a leaf primordia is you can think of it like a baby leaf but it's it could be anything. Leaf primordia are basically developing leaves. Okay so this is all from mitotic growth because remember this is body growth, so it's mitosis. And you have various configurations of leaves. So when you have alternate leaves, um, that's where you have your stem. And then the leaves are not directly across from each other, they alternate. There's a bird. Okay. Opposite stems, opposite leaves rather, you have the leaves that are right across from each other, they're neighbors. You can think of it that way, opposite. And then world, <clears throat> and I've told you about this before, world leaves are basically where you have the stem and they are kind of in a nice little whorl circle around the stem. Okay, so those are the various types of leaf configurations. Okay, so let's talk about leaf anatomy and structure. 
something that's really cool is if you look at a tree or a, any plant really looking at a plant it can tell you the story of all of the spring growth and summer growth that it's ever had ever which i think is pretty cool so let's look at this so you have this is basically what you'd see during a growing season and when you'd see when there aren't leaves. Um, so for example, people who are ident who identify plants like botanists, uh, or if you like to identify plants, there are ways to identify plants when there are not leaves, not during the growing season. It's way easier to identify a plant during the growing season. However, it is possible to identify a plant even in the wintertime without leaves. Um, and that is by looking at things like these uh, leaf scars and the configuration of those scars and what they look like. So let me show you, I actually have to change, hopefully this won't change how this looks to you, but these actually, I'm just gonna tell you these rather than show them up here. So, um, because I think if I do that, it's gonna change how things look for you. So, let's see. So let's look at each of these in turn. So here is the bud, okay. So that's the bud, um, and the leaf attachment is, if you look here, okay, this is called the petiole. That is where the leaf actually, um, it's basically the leaf stem. Sorry, something falling off my table. The leaf itself, ah, the leaf itself is called the blade. You might have heard that before. So this is the blade here. Here, where you have a leaf growing out, that, what this would be, is a node, okay? Here is another node. You're hearing, whoop, kids. All right, and here is an internode. Okay, that's the area between, so here it is analogous on a, on a stem that doesn't have leaves right now. So, this is an internode, node, it's the same, even if there are leaves there, okay? All right, and uh, here we have an axillary bud. So you have your leaf blade, your petiole, and in the middle there you'll have an axillary bud. This angle between the petiole and the bud itself is called the axle. And this angle corresponds to 137.5 degrees. And that actually corresponds to the golden bean. So that's over here, I actually said check out info on leaf angles in the golden mean. The golden mean is found like everywhere. Do you need something? What? I can't hear, okay. So, sorry, kids. Um, so it corresponds to the golden mean, which you find everywhere in nature. Like you could fall down a series, actually I encourage you, especially if we go into quarantine, fall down this YouTube uh, rabbit hole of the golden mean and the golden ratio because you see it all throughout nature you see it in um, nautilus shells which you might say well what's a nautilus you're going to see not a lot not not a lot nautilus shells um as we go forward in the semester when we talk about animals so but definitely look that up it's super cool super duper cool okay so anyway <clears throat> so you have that axle which is that angle okay and here's the thing Whenever a leaf falls off, the leaf and the petiole will fall, it leaves a scar. That's what I, what I meant when I said, you know, plants bear scars from every growing season. You can look at a plant and go, wow, there was a leaf here once. Because basically this is, this bundle, it says bundle scar, that's basically a vascular bundle scar. That's a scar where there was a vascular connection through the petiole into the leaf, because you have xylem and phloem tissue, right? Those are the veins of the leaf, but once that cuts off, then you end up with a scar. Down here, this is a leaf, this is actually the bud scar from when there was a bud in a prior growing season, and it's an apical stomatic tissue, and it, scales fell off, it actually leaves a little bit of a scar. So you can actually see growth over various growing seasons based on those bud scars, which is pretty cool. Okay, so let's move on to, that's external stem structure. Let's look at the inside of a stem. You've seen it before. Oh my gosh, you know this already. So this is just review, yay. Okay, so 
Ricole, you have the Yuda cat with the jellyfish, okay? And then you have your monocots, and the way you tell the difference between the shoots, right, is you have vascular bundles, xylem and phloem, throughout the ground tissue. Now you know what ground tissue is, I can actually say this. This is all ground tissue. It's not separated, this is just all ground tissue. So you have them diffuse, that's a monocot, you know that already. And then you have your jellyfish in a ring for the dicots. Now, remember, out here you've got your epidermis, right? And then you have cortex. Here's the thing, in a dicot, that's where that ground tissue is separated. So on the outside you have cortex here, pith in the middle, right? Okay. Then you've got your, the legs of your jellyfish of the xylem, and above that is the phloem, and right above that you have cholinkoma cells. And you learn cholinkoma cells, they're important for right structure and protection and support. Remember, there are the cells that allow a plant to bend and not break because they have really thick cell walls. You can kind of tell when you look at those jellyfish. Basically, they're, they're a medusa head, the top of the, they're medusa. Uh, so, in the eudicots, you have, <clears throat> excuse me, you have vascular cambium, which we've already talked about, right? That gives rise to the secondary xylem and the secondary phloem. Develops between the primary xylem and the primary, primary phloem. It gives rise to those secondary vascular tissues, which are how you have that lateral growth. Basically, when you're looking at growth rings on a tree, that's successive layers of xylem tissue that are laid down every year. You do not have that kind of secondary growth in a monocot. So if you're looking at a plant and there's not um, tissue that would support a vascular cambium and no growth like this, because you know trees do this, um, then that is not a monocot. That's one way that you can tell the difference, okay? So now you're learning new ways to tell the difference between monocots and dicots. Okay, this is pretty much review for you, but just wanted to make sure that you see it again um, and then we talk a little bit about how those vascular bundles are either spread throughout the ground tissue or actually separating different layers of ground tissue, the cortex and the pith in the middle. Okay, let's look at this. So here you have um, a stem. This is a woody stem, a eudicot that's differentiating. So here you have your xylem, primary xylem, with the jellyfish, and your primary phloem, okay, right above it. Here's your cholinkoma cells, okay? And as, as the years go on, right, you have the vascular cambium right here. It's this green layer. You see that little green circle? Okay, that's the vascular cambium, the lateral meristem that gives rise to the secondary xylem, which these are the C here, all right? So that's basically adding growth rings. And the secondary phloem, which is a little thin layer there, okay? And then remember out here you have the core cambium. Those are those two lateral meristems. Cool. So here, this is the same plant. So we're moving from here to here to here. Oh, wow! And see, you still have that primary xylem in the middle, but that secondary xylem is the growth rings. So when you're looking at growth rings on a tree, that's secondary xylem. Okay. So again, primary and secondary phloem, chill in there. And this between those layers is your vascular cambium, okay? So this way, it's growing secondary xylem. It's laying down secondary xylem. This way, you have the secondary phloem. But it's laying down secondary xylem really every year. You don't see that um, with the secondary phloem. It's xylem. Okay, cool. So, uh-oh. Oh, there's a learning curve here. All right, cool. So, oh yeah, just a quick thing. One, don't count the primary down. One, two, three, four. So this tree is four years old. Okay. So, let's talk about uh, lenticels. Lenticels, these are special cells in the cork cambium. So remember the cork cambium is right underneath the bark. It's a lateral meristem. And that, they are special cells. They don't have subarin, which is a water resistant um, chemical. So since it's not resistant, and it, pre it, prevent, it, uh, it allows 
gas exchange. It doesn't prevent gas exchange. So lenticels are essentially sites on a stem that allow gas exchange. Um, they're special cells too. So this is a cherry tree and these little light things, you may have seen these on trees before and we're like, I don't know what that is. They're lenticels and they're sites of gas exchange. Okay, and this is a cross section so you can see it. So you see all these lentis this lenticel right here, all these um, unsuperized cells. There's actually, it's multiples, I should tell you that. Um, they allow gas exchange in and out through this, that woody stem. So that's actually how you have gas exchange. One of the ways, there's a couple ways that you have gas exchange through a woody stem. There's still gas exchange. Okay, so let's talk about modified stems because we've talked a little bit about all the different kinds of roots. We're gonna talk about different kinds of stems. Um, and so we talked about adventitious roots, which are roots that occur basically, well, adventitious roots are roots that occur somewhere other than the main root, like the tap root or the root bodies, like a fab fibrous root. So um, here, let's see. So let's start with bulbs. So this, fun fact, tulips, lilies, technically onions. So I've, I, onions are actually a bulb from a modified stem. Um, and here you have, there it is, ta-da, okay. The, the layers, like the outer layers of an onion, they're actually leaves on that modified stem, okay? And beneath, beneath here, you have adventitious roots that are coming out of this modified stem. So that's what those are. Okay, that's the first kind, bulbs. The second, rhizomes, you are familiar with, right? So you see these in ferns. So the rhizome, it comes sideways here, okay? The rhizome, is technically, um, I told you it's like a plant, it's like a fern root, but it's not a true root, right? I think I've said that several times. It's not a true root, but it's like a root. Roots, um, it's technically a modified stem. It's not a true, true root, okay? So that's a big thing to remember. Rhizomes are not true roots. They are modified stems that perform a root-like function, okay? Cool. And these guys are underground. These guys are underground. But when you go on to, um, let's see, uh, runners and stolons, those stems are, are not underground, but these are underground. Okay, cool. So let's talk about corms. Not corns, corms. So a corm, they look a lot like bulbs, but they don't actually have those leaves that you find like on the outside of a corm. Um, examples of this, uh, there are certain kinds of flowers that will have corms, um, but the main thing you just need to know is that they're kind of modified stem, and that's all I care about you doing, okay? That's all I'm going to ask you to do. More! So runners. Runners, if you've ever picked strawberries, you've probably seen a runner. Uh, it is basically a stem that grows around the ground. That's a runner. It's pretty simple. Um, stolons same kind of thing um, but uh, you see and you see these in different plants than strawberries but basically they're just stems that are on top of the ground okay tubers okay this is where um, we're kind of building on knowledge so tubers if you don't know what a tuber is they're the things they're like potatoes that you eat or sweet potatoes sweet potatoes white potatoes purple potatoes all potatoes or tubers um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head another tuber. You could probably think of one. Um, so, these, I told you that they perform a root-like function, um, but they're not true roots, kind of like a rhizome. So don't let that confuse you. Uh, I told you that potatoes are carbohydrate storage organs. That's true, but the tuber itself is basically the tip of a rhizome. So that's basically, a, that is a modified stem and it's the tip of a modified stem with carbohydrate storage capacity, all these amyloplasts that can store carbs. So there's still carbohydrate storage organs, they're just, they're, they're basically a, the tip of a modified stem. I'm probably blowing your mind right now, right? I hope I am. Okay, I hope you can hear the rain. Can you hear the rain? 
Also, I'm sorry if the light changes. Anytime I move, the camera adjusts the light and that can be annoying. And I realize that, um, I'm sorry. I'll try not to move too much. Okay, on to more stems. So, tendrils. You've probably heard the word tendril. I don't know if you knew that a tendril is a real thing. Um, it's a modified stem. It looks kind of like a little modified stem. You see these oftentimes in like vines. Um, pumpkins have tendrils. Uh, cucumbers, cucumber plants can have tendrils. They're basically like the little twiny dudes that come out from the stem. Well, they are themselves modified stems and they help these plants snake along the ground or climb up, okay? Um, so you've probably seen them before. You've definitely seen them if you've ever been to a pumpkin patch, at least I hope you have. So they're really beautiful and cute and curly. Sometimes that's actually where we get when people talk about having tendrils of hair, it's based on the modified plant root, plant, uh, excuse me, plant stem. Okay, cladophils. Cladophils are basically when you say cactus leaves, maybe you've never said cactus leaves. I've said cactus leaves. They're not really leaves. The leaves of a cactus truly are its spines. They're modified leaves. We'll get into that in a minute. But cladophils are basically, the f they're flattened and they look like leaves, but they're actually modified stems. So just know, if you're looking at a cactus, the, the leaf tissue is gonna be the spines. The little leafy looking things are cladophils and they're modified stems, okay? Cool. So those are your cool different kinds of stems that you may not have realized were in fact stems. So let's talk about, <clears throat> so those stems, stems. We talked about roots, stems. Now we're gonna talk about leaves. <clears throat> Ooh. Okay, sorry, I gotta take a drink of coffee. I just been running through here, guys. Ooh. I can't tell if I'm going too fast. Oh no. Thankfully, again, you can pause me. Do feel free. And now I'm remembering, I forgot to do our meditation. Guys, we're still gonna meditate, okay? We're still meditating. It's important to breathe, especially if you're stuck inside. Dude, you follow that breath. Don't, just let those thoughts go. Yeah, okay. So, I apologize. I guess I could do a meditation now, but I prefer to, you know what, let's do that. Let's take a moment before we move on to leaves. Let's just follow our being for a minute. Is that cool? Okay. So you can be totally present here in biology. Just follow the breath, no thought. Okay, cool, welcome back. Let me also offer this suggestion to you. Um, <clears throat> since we're doing this asynchronously and I don't necessarily love the whole idea of people sitting for an hour at a time, even though I'm going to be doing that for the most part, this actually can move so it won't always, like I can take it places if I can move my computer. Um, I'm also setting up an Instagram account. I'll talk more about that in a minute, but do feel free to, um, what I would suggest is, you know, take your notes and pause the video at 30 minutes. We're close to that now. And walk around the room. Go get a drink. Drink water. 
Hydrate. Hydrate. Um, what else can you do? Do some yoga. Mm. Do just spit. Do some push-ups. You know me. I love my push-ups. But I'm not gonna do push-ups to save time on the video. So do feel free to you know self-care. You can actually do self-care in the middle of class. Huh. Okay. So let's talk about leaves. Um, and then when we finish up with this lecture, I'm gonna give you a little more info about the Bio2 Instagram account. We're gonna do that. And I'm gonna post these not only to Schoology, but to YouTube because, I don't know, why not, right? You can learn about leaves and stems and tell your friends, I guess. Okay, so leaves, 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 do, do, do. Oh, that's trees, trees, trees. It was an Arbor Day Foundation. Uh, commercial when I was younger. Anyway, spread the world around the nation about trees. Trees are terrific. You should look that up. Oh, yes, look that up. What? Trees? Yeah, yeah, my son just said they are. They are terrific. It's true. Okay, so here we are. Leaves. The outside. Let's look at the outside of the leaf. Here we is. Okay, this leaf, we call this leaf serrated. Ooh, let me put that word up here. Let's see how I do it. Here we go. Serrated. Look. Here. Serrated. They have serrations. That means that the leaf um, has teeth. That's what that means. Okay. So, things that I want you to know about this. So, the lamina up here. The petiole is actually the stalk of the leaf. Here's your actual stem. The axial bud is so Okay, but that's that axial bud, axillary bud, excuse me, axillary bud. That leaf angle, remember, is the axle, A-X-I-L. Let's put it, we got a, we got a chalkboard. Ha <laughs> ha, axle, ah, axis, axle, ha <laughs> ha. Okay, and here, so here's a new thing. These are stipules. These stipules, um, they're basically, little growths at the base of the petiole and you can either have more leaves grow from them or they could be modified into spines. Let me make one thing clear though. Spines are modified leaves. Thorns, I should have told you this before, thorns are modified stem tissue. So like a honey locust tree, if you've ever seen one, um, they have thorns, true thorns. So. But spines, you might, you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, this, these are technical terms? Yeah. So, so spines are modified leaves, so it could be a spine or it could be leaf forming. Okay. All right. And then you also have your vascular tissue that you can see here on the outside. So this, is this a monocot or a dicot? Ooh, we'll do like Dora the Explorer. Watch this. Okay. Is this a monocot or a dicot? Uh, so, how many of you watched Dora the Explorer when you were younger? So, uh, dicots, this is a dicot leaf because you have the reticulate veins or net like veins. I'm going to say the word again reticulate veins or net like veins. Okay, cool. Here you have parallel veins, parallel venation. That is the hallmark of a monocot. Okay. Ooh, leaf types. So let's talk about, let's talk about leaves types. Okay. Um, so you have simple leaves. These are leaves that are basically, they're not divided into leaflets. That's, that's it. They're just leaves. I don't, I don't know what you want. They're just leaves. <laughs> so these leaves can be lobed like this. This is a, um, an oak tree. Oak leaves are lobed, but there are two, just for funsies, there are two major groups of oaks. There are red oaks and there are white oaks. Now, those aren't necessarily the species. There are multiple species within the red oaks and the white oaks. The difference is 
White oaks, so fun thing for you, and now you'll start to notice them. White oaks have what we call finger lobes. This would be a, a, an example of a tree in the white oak group because it has rounded lobes. Red oak leaves have pointy lobes, okay? So, so now I hope you'll start to look for that because you'll see it everywhere. You're like, oh, and it's not necessarily a red oak, it's in the red oak group, but it might be a red oak. I'm not gonna teach you how to identify that right now, but I do encourage you to try that. Um, I will probably actually, yeah, I'm gonna offer bonus points um, starting next week because I need to add all, in all the bonus points we have from the various talks we've had, but next week we're gonna have a bonus, nope, that's spring break, after spring break, we're gonna have an opportunity for bonus points where you go find a leaf and if we're still doing this virtually, you can send me a picture of the leaf and identify it because I really want you to learn the, some of the plants in your area. This should be interactive. Okay, um, in terms of getting familiar with where you are. So anyway, you got the lobes, you've got indentations, and then teeth, which are those serrations that I showed you before. <clears throat> okay, then this, so simple leaves here. This is a compound leaf. So this is a leaf, this is leaf, this is a leaf, this is a leaf, this is a leaf, but this is all a leaf, okay? This is a compound leaf. Compound leaf is basically a leaf that has a bunch of leaflets that are still a part of the leaf. Examples of this are things like um, ash trees, hickory, nope, 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 pecan trees. Yeah, um, yeah. ash trees will come to mind. I, I studied green ash trees as part of my master's thesis, and so that's immediately what I think of. And you can actually, how you can do some identification work based on how many leaflets are on the leaf. It helps you to identify the tree. Fun factoid. Okay, so those are the kinds of leaves, simple and compound, All right? Now, let's talk about um, what else is on the outside there. We were basically looking at the whole structure of, you know, the leaf or leaflets. Let's talk about, you know, if you're just looking at one leaf. Okay, so. You have transparent epidermal cells with no chloroplasts, okay? You have, and remember, you have parenchyma cells that are epidermal cells and then that don't have chloroplasts. Chlorenchyma cells are those cells that have chloroplasts. We've talked about that before. The epidermis on the top, so this is the top of the leaf, so here's the top of the leaf and the bottom of the leaf. Top of the leaf, waxy cuticle. Helps prevent water loss right? Because it's warm up here, okay? So it has a waxy cuticle. Um, typically, your stomata, um, well, and this waxy cuticle is all over the leaf, right? But then you have stomata, and those are typically on the bottom of the leaf, and you have the guard cells around the stomata. So remember, I told you they're these sausage-like, and when I say I told you, if you're, if you're not in my class, if somebody's just watching this video, these are things I've told in my class. If you're in the class, you're in the club. Okay, so you got your sausage shaped, they're so cute. Guard cells, aren't they adorable? Okay, on the outside that flank the stomata here, right? This is a stoma, stomata is plural. Okay, and this is really beautiful because it's showing you this is the nucleus, you can see the chloroplasts, okay? So they flank that guard cell and open and close that stoma for gas exchange, right? That take in CO2 for photosynthesis. You also release oxygen, and also there's water exchange, water vapor exchange that happens at stomata, okay? All right, let's talk about different kinds of modified leaves. So, you have various kinds of modified leaves I'm going through here, here we are, okay. So, you have floral leaves. These are like like trick flowers. Oh, I know, I know. So, for example, like dogwood trees, no lie, their actual flowers are like these little green and yellow things. Um, I know you're probably like, what is she looking at over there? I mean, this is how I think, and you probably may not notice in class that I like look up to think. Um, <laughs> so, now you're getting to know all of my quirks. Oh, okay, so, also the coffee just kicked in. 
Mm. Mm. So oftentimes these floral leaves will surround the true flower if the true flower is somewhat inconspicuous, um, and those leaves will resemble petals. So you still have what looks like that circle of petals, which is called what? The corolla, good, okay. And basically can draw in pollinators, right? So those leaves are performing a very important function. All right, spines. I've told you that spines are modified leaves. They're, they're modified leaves. That's, that's what they do. So, but what is, do you think their function might be? It's protection, right? You probably just said, uh, say that loud, protection, right? Um, so yeah, protection from herbivores, great. You have reproductive leaves. These are really cool. These are essentially um, little leaves that form on this, like on leaves that could actually give rise to a whole new plant. Pretty nuts, right? These, each one of these could be a whole new plant. Window leaves. These are really neat. This is, this is an example of a plant with window leaves. So do you notice? So these are actually modified leaves here. These are leaves, like this is a leaf. This isn't part of a stem, this is the leaf. You see at the top here, it's clear. That is so cool. This allows for underground photosynthesis. So the leaves, sometimes what will happen is the plant will actually be, part, large parts of the plant will be down here in the ground, okay? and you'll have these clear cells here, okay? No, no cells with chloroplasts, just clear right here, that allow sunlight to come through to hit cells that have chloroplasts further down so that you can have photosynthesis occurring even underground. Plants, no man, plants, plants are so amazing. Okay, shade leaves. Like this plant attacking this woman. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> or maybe she's attacking the leaves. They're probably just hanging out. So, um, shade leaves. You can have shade leaves, I mean, even on a plant that doesn't have shade leaves. You can have shade leaves on a plant, typically they're lower down. And then above you don't have shade leaves. Shade leaves are basically just bigger leaves. They have a larger surface area for photosynthesis. Great, yeah, so because if you have less light getting through, you need more surface area, right, to capture that, those fewer, um, the fewer photons coming through, right, so that you can still have plenty of photosynthesis to feed yourself, to um, produce sugars, carbohydrates, but you, I don't know where the boat was going with that, guys. No, nope. okay, good. So you still have plenty of surface area to provide enough food for the plant. Cool, to capture light. All right, you also have insectivorous leaves. And these are leaves that eat uh, usually insects. I guess they could also eat um, arachnids. They could eat arthropods, possibly small animals. I, I mean, may, I mean, these are technically small animals, I guess, but um, I'm getting a little too technical here. So, they can eat stuff. Ah! So, these are pitcher plants. You may have seen them. They're beautiful. They have, they can collect water down here, but they also secrete a digestive liquid. So what happens is, an unsuspecting insect flies in here. Woo. And when that unsuspecting insect flies in there, it can't always get out because this, these pitcher plants actually have slippery sides. Some of them have hairs, um, depending on the particular plant, the species. So then the prey either, um, typically with a pitcher plant, they'll fall in and they just can't get out and they drown. Okay, and then the plant slowly digests it. Neat, okay, so Venus flytraps. 
those are so this this is one leaf they're two sides of a leaf okay the leaf has basically like a seam right but it's one leaf okay so the prey and suspect and prey whoop, okay and basically the prey trips trips trichomes so it's two trichomes here two trichomes are touched um the leaf the leaf two sides of it snap shut so remember uh, trichomes are hair-like projections right so basically it tricks those ha trips those hairs and it smashes shut and starts to di secrete digestive juices to um, digest the prey Great pets. I mean, oh, I wish we were in class because I would ask if any of you, some people, I've had students who've had Venus flytraps. Great pets. Okay. Sundews. Also, so these are all insectivorous right now. So pitcher plants are insectivorous, um, Venus flytraps, and sundews. So sundews, these are just different examples. Okay. So sundews, these secrete a really sticky mucilage. So an unsuspecting insect or whoever gets on there and it gets basically held there. There's, and these, this mucilage is secreted by its trichomes. So I told you, you know, you can have glandular trichomes that secrete certain substances, like um, things that deter herbivores. Well, in this case, it can hold um, onto prey and as the prey is digested. So plants are pretty, can be pretty metal. Don't mess with plants. I'm just kidding, you should definitely eat plants. It's good for you. Okay, another example, water wheels. So here, this is actually a daphnid. And essentially, it's similar to um, the situation you'd see with the Venus flytrap. The prey is trapped and digested, okay? So those are the various kinds of um, modified leaves. This is the end of chapter 36, plant form. Um, so I am going to um, stop here and just, I guess, talk a little bit about, there's a thing in my lap. Um, ah, I'm back. About how the week is gonna work a little bit, and, but I'm actually gonna post that instructional video probably in, in the next few hours, um, as soon as we get an announcement from the Board of Trustees. So, um, I have your lab midterms graded, and if uh, those grades are going up this morning, afternoon, be gentle, I'm homeschooling. Um, so, but if you want to see what you missed, we have ways of figuring that out. I can scan it in for you and send it to you. Um, well, well we're, on, we're still on campus this week. <laughs> what am I saying? I could leave it for you outside my office. Um, so just let me know and I can help you out with that. Um, in terms of lab, um, we do, I don't know. So I'm just gonna have to tell you as soon as I hear what the Board of Trustees decides. But as I said in my Schoology update, I would prefer to spread people out um, physically and especially and temporally. So that means um, if you're in Wednesday lab, and we have Wednesday Lab, be thinking if you could come to Thursday Lab instead, because there's a lot of folks in Wednesday Lab, and we're gonna sit one person on either side of the of the table, and lots of hand washing and stuff like that. Okay, um, so on Wednesday, we're gonna do chapter 37. I'm really hoping, that's plant transport. So how plants transport water through their tissues. Um, hopefully we can finish that whole chapter on Wednesday and really start on animals, animal diversity and animal body plants. So. Um, <clears throat> the last thing I want to talk about is how we can actually interact live. Obviously this week, if you have a need, I can, I, if we're still on campus, I can come talk to you. Um, I have my kiddo, but we can make it work. Or um, I'm, I'm going to have virtual office hours, and I'll, um, I'm working out those times right now based on when my son's school work, when we're working that out, we're scheduling stuff. So. Um, that'll be part of the next video, so look for that. I'll have live office hours where I will be on a webcam, available, and you can just come in at any time, just like I'm in my office, but it's my computer. And then um, 
you know, always you can always email me. Um, so just know that you can always email me. I'm gonna check my email. I check my email a couple times a day. I actually will probably have more time to check my email now because I'm working on the computer all the time. Um, so with that being said, um, this uh, your your lecture for Wednesday. I'm going to post it before 8 a.m. so you could watch it at 8 a.m. But this is going to be asynchronous, and you can choose not to if you want to. And then at the end of the week. Um, I'm gonna also have kind of a live Q&A so that even if you if you want to come and hear other people's questions, like we do a review session, so if you, you come with your questions, you can just go ahead and email them to me if you want and I'll reply to you, but I'm gonna answer all those questions at one time in a live Q&A so that you can also come on and bounce off the questions so that we're still able to have this interaction um, just virtually. So, cool, I'm still here for you and if you need me, just let me know. Come to my virtual office hours. I'll give you those instructions soon. And um, just stay healthy. No big deal. Stay healthy. Okay. So uh, I will see you all virtually soon. Oh, one last thing. <laughs> one last thing. I still have one minute. Hey, <laughs> see, I'm doing it like class time. Um, I made an Instagram account for Bio 112, where I am. It's for all my classes. Um, and I will link that on Schoology. Uh, I have, it's like Dr. John Bio Squad. <laughs> I'm pretty proud of that name. So, anyway, um, so follow on Instagram because we're going to be doing bio stuff on there. Um, and Morty will make appearances. Uh, Morty, Morty is not where he was a minute ago. Okay, so I have to go find him. And so I will see you all soon. And uh, stay well. Okay. Bye.